As you may already know, Betelgeuse is far from an ordinary star. This red supergiant, situated in the Orion constellation, is a mere 650 light years from our solar system. It ranks as the second largest and 10th brightest star in the night sky, excluding the sun. A few years back, Betelgeuse garnered attention when it began to dim, hinting at a potential supernova explosion. However, this wasn't the only intriguing aspect of Betelgeuse. Observations using the Alma Telescope Array revealed that Betelgeuse rotates at an incredible rate, completing a rotation roughly every 20 years. While this may seem slow for a star of Betelgeuse's immense size, it translates to a surface speed of 18,000 kilometers per h, or about 5 km per second. This is 10 times faster than the Earth's rotational velocity and nearly defies the laws of physics for such a colossal supergiant. Let's begin with the basics. There are various methods to measure the rotation of celestial objects. For large objects like the Sun, the Moon, or planets within our solar system, it's relatively simple to point a telescope at them and observe their features moving in real time. To give you an idea, the Moon has an angular diameter of about half a degree, making its features visible to the naked eye. Jupiter, with an angular diameter of roughly 0.1 degrees, has features that are clearly discernible through a telescope. But what about Betelgeuse, the supergiant star located 650 light years away? Despite its immense size, Betelgeuse is so distant that its angular diameter is 1,000 times smaller than Jupiter's, rendering it a mere blur even in our most advanced telescopes. Fortunately, there's another method to determine if a star like Betelgeuse is rotating. It's less direct than simply observing it, but it's a clever technique that relies on the Doppler shift effect. You might already be familiar with this effect from the change in pitch of a siren as an ambulance passes by. When the ambulance is moving toward you, the siren sounds higher pitched because the sound waves reach you at a higher frequency. As soon as the ambulance moves away, the sound waves hit you at a lower frequency, making the siren sound lower pitched. What you might not notice is that the Doppler shift also affects light waves. Just as it changes the sound of the siren, it changes the color of the light reflecting off the ambulance. As the ambulance approaches, the light appears slightly bluer due to the higher frequency. When it moves away, the light appears slightly redder. This same principle can be applied to starlight to detect rotation. This visual effect isn't obvious because the speed of light is a million times faster than the speed of sound. So it would take a much faster ambulance for us to actually notice the optical Doppler shift. While we don't have ambulances here on Earth flying by at 5 km per second, such speeds are common in space, which brings us back to Betelgeuse. When a star is rotating, one half of its surface moves toward us while the other half moves away. This creates a gradient of colors emitted by the star that we can observe with our telescopes, even if the star is too blurry to reveal distinct features. By observing which side appears bluer and which side appears redder, we can infer the direction of rotation. By measuring the difference between the bluer and redder frequencies, we can calculate the star's rotational velocity. This technique was used by astronomers to analyze data collected by ALMA and conclude that Betelgeuse's surface is spinning at 5 km per second. That's all well and good, but the known physics of spinning stars suggests that a velocity of 5 km per second is far too high for a red supergiant like Betelgeuse. For instance, our sun has a rotational speed of around 2 km per second, yet it is 1,000 times smaller and about 10 times lighter than Betelgeuse. If the sun were to expand to the size of Betelgeuse, it would engulf the entire inner solar system and nearly reach Jupiter's orbit. In doing so, its rotational velocity would decrease to just two meters second to conserve angular momentum, much like a figure skater who slows down when extending her arms. If the sun also increased its mass by tenfold to match Betelgeuse's mass, its rotational speed would drop further to 0.2 meters slash second. In general, the larger and more massive a star is, the slower we expect it to spin. However, Betelgeuse seems to contradict these expectations with its surprisingly high rotational velocity. So what's going on here? One possible explanation is that Betelgeuse may not have started out with such high angular momentum. It gained its high rotational velocity through a process known as stellar cannibalism. Stellar cannibalism occurs when one star consumes another, typically its companion in a binary orbit. In scientific terms, the more massive star's gravity 
strips away the gas layers of its companion star, leaving behind only the inner core. This process transfers a significant amount of angular momentum from the companion star's gas to the more massive star, causing it to not only grow larger, but also spin faster than expected by natural means. But is this truly how Betelgeuse acquired its rapid rotation? Or could there be something even more enigmatic occurring beneath its surface? A collaborative team of researchers from Europe and China recently proposed an intriguing possibility. Betelgeuse's seemingly extreme rotational speed might be a grand optical illusion. To understand how this could be possible, let's revisit what the ALMA team actually observed with their advanced array of telescopes. Despite the blurry images of Betelgeuse, they discerned that one hemisphere emitted slightly redder light frequencies, while the other emitted slightly bluer frequencies. Simulations of Betelgeuse reveal a turbulent and chaotic surface, akin to boiling water in an oven, where enormous bubbles constantly form and dissipate under intense heat. Each of these bubbles can span 100 million kilometers, covering substantial areas of Betelgeuse's surface. If one of these bubbles were heading towards Earth, even our most advanced spacecraft would be powerless against its rapid speeds, reaching up to 30 km per second. The only hope would be for the bubble to burst violently back onto Betelgeuse's surface before it reaches us. As these gas bubbles rise and fall across Betelgeuse, its surface becomes a mosaic of regions moving either towards or away from Earth. This dynamic movement causes the Doppler effect, where light emitted from approaching regions appears blue-shifted while light from receding regions appears redshifted. Recently, a study proposed this proposition rose to challenge all previous explanations of Betelgeuse's rotation. The international team of researchers suggested that Betelgeuse might not be rotating rapidly after all. Instead, they proposed that ALMA's observations could be detecting a spectrum of light frequencies from Betelgeuse due to turbulence on its surface. Therefore, astronomers might have misinterpreted these frequency shifts as a rotational effect. However, if you've been closely following the physics, you might have noticed a lingering issue with this alternative explanation. A rotating star should generate a smooth gradient of light frequencies, ranging from bluer than expected light on one edge to redder than expected light on the other. On the other hand, a turbulent star would produce a random patchwork of colors with bluer patches where bubbles rise and redder patches where bubbles fall back onto the surface. How could astronomers at ALMA mistake one scenario for the other? If they observed a smooth gradient of colors from Betelgeuse, shouldn't the patchwork explanation already be dismissed? In an ideal scenario, gradients would indicate rotation and patches would indicate bubbles. However, Betelgeuse is so distant that the image captured by ALMA is far from ideal. It's more of a blur than a high-definition photograph. When simulations of Betelgeuse's surface account for the limited resolution of observations, they predict that the patchy regions of red and blue shifts could easily be mistaken for a rotational gradient about 90% of the time. This suggests that even if the astronomers at ALMA conducted their analysis correctly, Betelgeuse's turbulent surface may have deceived them into believing it spins much faster than it actually does. This realization underscores the need for higher resolution studies of Betelgeuse. Fortunately, there are already improved images of Betelgeuse taken by the same telescope with longer exposure times. The downside, however, is that it may take a couple of years to thoroughly analyze these images. Answers are on the horizon. For now, I'm interested in hearing your thoughts. Do you think Betelgeuse is genuinely spinning at five kembers a second after consuming its companion star? Or do you believe the new claim that this rotational speed is merely an optical illusion will prove correct? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Until next time, all the best.